So let's start talking about colligative properties. And colligative properties are properties that depend only on the number of the solute particles present, not necessarily the identity of the solute. And so this is a fancy word. All we're, all we're doing now is we're taking a pure solvent. Okay, so we're taking like pure water and we're adding something to it. So we'll add like sugar to it or salt. We're going to add some kind of solute to it. And, and then measure different properties. So we'll look at that. what happens to the vapor pressure. It turns out vapor pressure always goes down. Whenever you make a solution, the vapor pressure is going to decrease compared to the pure solvent. The freezing point is going to go down. The boiling point will go up. And then you can also measure something called osmotic pressure. You may have learned about osmosis in, in biology. So that, that word might look familiar to you. So vapor pressure lowering. Why does the vapor pressure always go down? So if you think back to chapter 11 when we talked about vapor pressure. We were looking at, uh, we had a liquid and the liquid, some of the liquid was evaporating and so you have uh, some gas as well. So you have a liquid and a gas and they're in dynamic equilibrium, which means that the rate that the liquid's turning into the gas equals the rate at which the gas is turning back into the liquid. The rate of condensation equals the rate of vaporization. And at that point you're in dynamic equilibrium and you can measure the vapor pressure. The so vapor pressure has to do with how much gas you have in the gas phase at that particular time. Um, and so that's the, the, the pressure that the gas phase is exerting onto the liquid phase. That's what your vapor pressure is. Uh, so down here we have three, three different pictures. So you have at equilibrium, this is what's going on. You just have all the, the blue solvent particles here. Now what happens when you start to add some uh, solute to it? Uh, you can see, you, well, you can see kind of in the picture, you, you need to pull some of these solvent molecules out of the gas phase and back into the solution in order to solvate these solute, It's <laughs> a lot of words, in order to sol so solvate the solute particles. And so in order to dissolve them, um, less you're going to have less gas in the gas phase. It's going to have to come back down into the liquid phase. So whenever you add a, solid, uh, a, a solute, the vapor pressure is always going to go down. And you can calculate this using Rel's law here, uh, which just says the vapor pressure of the um, solution. So this is the vapor pressure of the solution. So vapor pressure, let's really write, write this again, of the solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Now make sure that you're using the mole fraction of the solvent, the bigger one, not the solute. It's the solvent. It's really tempting to use the solute. That's not what we want. We want the solvent, the bigger one. Um, okay, so let's see how we can use this problem. How we can use this equation in the following problem. The vapor pressure of pure water, so the vapor pressure of pure water, all right, so that's what we're talking about over here, the one that has that superscript zero up there. The vapor pressure of the pure water at a particular temperature, do you see how temperature is not even involved in this problem? It's not there, but the vapor pressure will change at different temperatures, which is why they give it to you. Um, but we don't need to use it for our calculations. It's just saying that at this particular temperature, this is what the vapor pressure is. So if you see another problem where you're at a different temperature, you'll have a different vapor pressure. That's the whole reason why it's there, but you can ignore it for now. It's not in our, in our equation. So the vapor pressure of pure water at this particular temperature is 1070 torr. All right, let's write that down here. So vapor pressure, oops, vapor pressure, pure water, pure solvent is equal to 1070 torr. All right. Um, the solution, all right, so a solution of ethylene glycol in water has a vapor pressure of one atmosphere. All right, so the vapor pressure of the solution, so vapor pressure of the solution is one atmosphere. Does anybody see a problem? I have atmosphere and I have tor. Oh no. Well, I know this is a really quick conversion. I know that one atmosphere is 760 tor. And since I'm not using the ideal, um, I'm not using R, I'm not using the ideal gas constant, but that doesn't matter if I'm in tor or ATM, just as long as I match. <laughs> so just as this guy's in tor, then we'll put this guy in tor. And that's fine. So we have 760 tor over here, and I just chose it that way because I could do it in my head. So I have the vapor pressure of the solution, I have the vapor pressure of the uh, solvent, and what I want to find is the mole fraction of the water, mole fraction of the solvent. That's the easy one because that's what's over here. So I just have to set that up. I have vapor pressure of the, of the, sol of the solution, 760. You notice how that is less than 
uh, the vapor pressure of the solvent, the pure solvent, which was 1070 torr. All right, and so now all I want to do is solve for the mole fraction, and that's the mole fraction of the water. That's what I'm looking for. Divide by 1070, divide by 1070. And when I work that out, I get the mole fraction of the water is, okay, what do I have it? It's a point seven one. So zero point seven one. So mole fraction. There we go.